Hello friends, this video on anatomy of flowering plants part 22 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So here we will concentrate on the secondary growth and the secondary growth happens because of the lateral meristem which are nothing but a cambium. This cambium is again of two types. One is vascular cambium and the other one is cord cambium. So both of them cause secondary growth. Now we will discuss about each type of cambium both vascular and cord one by one and we will see how they differ from each other. Right? Now in this section we will primarily talk about, we will take example of stem. Now secondary growth happens in dicot stem, it also happens in dicot root. But we will now primarily discuss about dicot stem and we will see how the processes take place. It remains almost the same even in case of dicot root. So let us talk about vascular cambium first. This is a meristematic layer that is very very obvious because it is uh, capable of cell division and it is going to give rise to many new cells so it has to be a meristematic layer it exists as a layer between primary xylem and primary phloem and that is why it is called vascular cambium because it is present between the vascular tissues so this is also called intravascular cambium. Now I will show you the function of vascular cambium step by step. How vascular cambium result in secondary growth. Right? Now this is the cross section of a dicot stem. So in a dicot stem this is how the um, vascular bundles are arranged. Do you remember I said in a uh, dicot stem the vascular bundles are arranged in ring pattern. So this is how it is. The red colored structure is xylem, this structure is phloem and this green layer of cell between xylem and phloem is the vascular cambium. So this vascular cambium, when it is present within each vascular bundle, it is known as intravascular cambium. So that is the cambium cells present between primary xylem and primary phloem. So this vascular cambium has nothing to do with this vascular cambium. They are all independent. So that at this point of time, each of these cambium is also known as intravascular cambium. The next step is interfascicular cambium. Interfascicular cambium like how you have intra-school competition that means competition which is held within the school. Inter-school competition means competition between different schools. So similarly it is here. Intrafascicular that means it is within a vascular bundle. Interfascicular means two vascular bundles are going to get connected now. So interfascicular cambium is going to be something like this. The medullary cells adjoining the intrafascicular cambium. So this was the intra this was your intrafascicular cambium. Now these two intrafascicular cambium, two intrafascicular cambium are joined by the cells, by these cells, and this forms a ring-like structure which is called interfascicular cambium. Right? Okay. So this results in the formation of the cambial ring. So this ring which is formed now is known as the cambial ring. So it is nothing but a continuous ring of cambium and this is a continuous ring now. There is, no, there is nothing discontinuous in between. So a continuous ring of cambium. What happens after this ring is formed? Then starts. Now this ring of cambium being meristematic in nature they can form new cells on both sides on the outer side as well as on the inner side so this results in the formation of secondary phloem and secondary xylem so whenever it forms cells on the outer side what is there on the outer side of the cambium like each vascular bundle is something like this so this is the cambium so if this cambium forms new cells on the outer side, so outer side is phloem. So the new cells formed on the side of phloem will give rise to secondary phloem and the new cells which are formed along the xylem side will give rise to secondary xylem. Right? So cells on the outer side of the cambial ring differentiate into secondary xylem, secondary phloem. So something like this, this is the cambial ring. This ring which you see here, that is the cambial ring. So you can mark it as cambial ring. 
right? So this is your primary xylem. Inside you have the primary xylem and outside you have the primary phloem. So cambial ring is formed between primary xylem and primary phloem. Now this cambial ring will form cells on the outer side. So that means these red colored cells which are formed on the outer side of the uh, cambial ring that is going to be your secondary phloem. Similarly, the cells which are formed on the inner side of the cambial ring that will be secondary xylem. So cells on the inner side of the cambial ring differentiate into secondary xylem. So here this side will be formed secondary xylem. So here you have your primary xylem, then you have your secondary xylem, then you have the cambial ring, then you have secondary phloem and then you have primary phloem. So this is how it will be. Right? Here you have the cambial ring and innermost is your primary xylem and outermost is your primary phloem. Right? So innermost is primary xylem, then secondary xylem, then cambial ring, then secondary phloem and then primary phloem. Clear? Okay, so this is how the thickness keep on increasing. So earlier it was only two layers, primary xylem, primary phloem. Then, then it became primary xylem, cambial ring, second and primary phloem. Then it became primary xylem, secondary xylem, cambial ring, secondary phloem and primary phloem. So as the layers keep on increasing, your thickness is basically increasing. Now, amount of secondary xylem produced is more than that of the secondary phloem. So, as a result of this, since more and more secondary xylem is formed, so what happens? Primary and secondary phloems gradually get crushed off by accumulation of too much secondary phloem. Now, when too much of secondary phloem is there in this region, this secondary phloem and primary phloem will gradually get crushed. However, the primary xylem will remain intact. So xylem part will remain the same, primary xylem and secondary xylem. So this was about the vascular cambium. So here this is clear, this is the cambial ring, this is secondary xylem and where is secondary phloem? I mean this is secondary phloem and this is secondary xylem. So you see the amount of secondary xylem is this much. Whereas the amount of secondary phloem is only this much. Right? Now also another important thing is you see some cells like this forming rays. So these are called secondary medullary rays. So what happens is at some places the cambium forms a narrow band of parenchyma. So these are nothing but parenchyma cells. So these parenchyma cells passes through secondary xylem and secondary phloem in radial direction. So see this is secondary phloem and secondary xylem. So these cells pass in radial direction. So these parenchyma cells are known as secondary medullary rays. So this was all about the vascular cambium. So now you know how vascular cambium can cause increase in girth. Let us thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.